on trucks with automatic transmissions. You may need to recheck the throttle position sensor adjustment. The procedure is described in the service manual. In some cases, the service or adjustments we described can help you solve problems your customers may be experiencing. In the next section, we're going to cover diesel engine diagnosis in greater depth. But before we do, let's check your knowledge with a review question. Of the following conditions, which one is the most likely to produce black exhaust smoke? A clogged fuel filter, a restricted air filter, or throttle linkage that is out of adjustment? The answer is a restricted air filter. It can also cause low power and excessive fuel consumption. Whether you're working on a gas engine or diesel engine, the first step in tracking down a fuel system concern is confirming the customer complaint. It's important that you obtain as detailed a description as possible, since the complaint will determine your next step in diagnosis. The powertrain control module for the Cummins turbo diesel controls and monitors only a few areas in comparison to gas engine PCMs. In most cases, malfunctions in these areas will be obvious. We're talking about the compressor clutch, charging system, and overdrive circuits, as well as the speed control, tachometer, and wait to start and water in fuel lamp circuits. In these cases, you'll need to connect the scan tool to the data link connector and use the powertrain diagnostic procedures manual to track down the cause. An exception to the obvious cases is the air intake heater. A malfunction in the heater can cause symptoms which might be caused by non-PCM items. So in troubleshooting cold start symptoms, it's a good idea to hook up the scan tool and use the powertrain diagnostic procedures manual to eliminate the air intake heater first. As indicated earlier, most of the fuel injection system is not controlled or monitored by the powertrain control module. So scan tool diagnostics of fuel system problems is limited. Because of this, and because any one symptom can be the result of a number of causes, in many cases, it's best to begin fuel system diagnosis with a visual inspection. The rear wheel drive truck service manual contains a step-by-step -step inspection procedure that should be followed. Many of the checks involve electrical connections, such as the one for the fuel solenoid. This solenoid allows fuel to enter the high pressure chamber of the pump when the ignition key is in the on position. Other checks involve the condition of components which supply and deliver the fuel and air intake components. In addition to the items listed in the service manual, it's also a good idea to check the manual shutoff lever at the pump. Make sure the shutoff lever is in the run position and not just partially engaged. Also be sure to check the intercooler. It should be free of obstructions and damage. The visual inspection can actually be done pretty quickly once you know what to look for. Besides, the alternative is the possibility of replacing an injection pump when the problem is really a manual shutoff lever that is out of position, or a fuel solenoid connector that has a pushed out or spread terminal. Oh, and you'll also need to refer to the inspection procedure to answer one of this month's Master Tech quiz questions. If a visual inspection does not reveal the cause of a problem, your next step is to consult the troubleshooting charts in the fuel system section of the service manual. The charts list possible symptoms and suggest possible causes and corrective actions. Keep in mind that these charts focus on the fuel system. In the beginning of the engine section of the service manual are engine performance charts which cover a wider range of engine symptoms and causes. You may need to use these charts depending on the customer complaint. At this point, it's important to use the charts to eliminate as many causes as possible and concentrate on the more probable ones. For example, if the complaint is hard starting only during cold weather and the engine starts and runs fine otherwise, the cause is not likely to be an open in the fuel solenoid or any of the other causes that affect fuel supply in general. 
In contrast, the fuel heater and cold start valve should be checked out. It's also important to concentrate on the more common, easily verifiable causes first. You'll notice that a malfunctioning fuel injection pump is the last item in each of the charts. That's because eliminating all other causes is often the only way of verifying a malfunctioning pump. So, never automatically assume that the injection pump must be replaced without checking out other causes. By the way, technical service bulletins are one diagnostic tool that can also help you avoid unnecessary pump replacement. The bulletins are summarized in this month's reference book and you'll need to refer to one of the bulletins to answer one of the Master Tech quiz questions. One-way diesel engine troubleshooting charts are different from those used for gas engines is the extent to which exhaust smoke is used to narrow down the cause of the problem. In general, black smoke indicates that the cylinders are receiving excess fuel or that something is preventing the fuel from being burned completely, including poor fuel condition. In general, white or blue fog-like exhaust when the engine is under load indicates that the cylinders are receiving insufficient fuel or that fuel is not arriving at the correct time. Keep in mind though that a certain amount of white smoke is normal when the engine is cold. Common causes of black smoke include substandard fuel, incorrect pump timing, a blocked intercooler, leaking fuel injectors, and a malfunctioning fuel injection pump. In the pump, a malfunctioning air fuel valve in particular can cause black smoke. Common causes of white or blue fog-like smoke include fuel quality problems, air in the system, or fuel system restrictions. They also include incorrect pump timing and during cold weather operation, an inoperative fuel heater or a malfunctioning fuel injection pump. In particular, the pump's cold start valve. In tracking down the cause of a symptom, there are a number of diagnostic procedures you'll need to be familiar with. We'll discuss these procedures right after another review question. Which of the following on the Cummins turbo diesel can be checked with a DRB2 scan tool? Air intake heater circuit, charging system, speed control, wait to start lamp circuit, the answer is all of them. All of these items are controlled and monitored by the PCM. As stated earlier, to use the troubleshooting charts, you need to be familiar with some diagnostic tests and procedures. Now, what tests you use will depend on what symptoms the truck has. In covering maintenance and visual inspection, we've already covered some of the procedures, such as checking pump timing, checking the fuel for contaminants, bleeding the fuel system, and adjusting the idle speed and throttle linkage. Now let's look at other tests you'll need to know, starting with the fuel solenoid. When the ignition key is on, the fuel solenoid allows fuel to flow to the fuel injection pump. If it is inoperative, the engine will not start. The solenoid requires at least 10 volts to lift it off its seat and 6 volts to stay open. You may be able to hear or feel the solenoid operating when the key is turned to on. If not, you'll need to remove it to verify operation. If the fuel solenoid is faulty, it can be replaced. It and the cold start solenoid are the only serviceable items on the pump. The lift pump is responsible for moving fuel from the fuel tank, through the filter, to the fuel injection pump. If it is malfunctioning, it can cause a no start condition or low power. To test the lift pump, install a T fitting at the pump inlet and attach a vacuum gauge to the T. Then start the engine.